Hello everyone, my name is h 2 Acon, and today I'm here with the fourth episode of Character Case Files. So far in the series, we've looked at the stories of John Woman 7, Catherine Halsey, and Sergeant Johnson. In this episode, we're going to be looking at another fan favourite. She's been there since the very start of the franchise, and Halo wouldn't feel the same without her. Let's take a look at the backstory of UNSC AI Charlie Tango Niner 0452-9. You may know her simply as Cortana. Cortana came into existence on the 7th of November 2549. She was created like all smart AIs through a process known as cognitive impression modeling, scanning and copying the neural pathways of a human brain. What made her more special than most is that the brain used to create her template did not belong to a deceased organ donor. Cortana was created as a copy of the brain of a flash-grown clone of Dr. Catherine Halsey, one of the brightest scientists that humanity had ever seen. Halsey created 20 clones of herself, however only one survived long enough for its brain to be harvested. Cortana was only the second AI to be produced from a cloned brain, the first being Cortana's older sister, an AI construct known as Kalmaya, who was also created from the brain of a Halsey clone. Cortana spent her early years working with Halsey in Oni's castle base on the colony world Reach. It is noted that she often grew bored of doing simple research tasks, and used some of her sophisticated insurgency software to infiltrate Oni's systems and read through classified files, satisfying both her boredom and her insatiable curiosity. Luckily for her and the Oni internal security team, she was finally assigned to a proper mission in the summer of 2552. Fresh from the great UNSC victory at Sigma Octanus IV, Oni put together a special task force for an exceedingly risky mission. Under the command of Captain Jacob Keyes, the heavily modified Halcyon-class cruiser Pillar of Autumn was tasked with going behind enemy lines and capturing a San Shyam by disabling and boarding a Covenant vessel. Oni hoped to be able to use the captured Prophet as a bargaining tool to negotiate an end to the Human Covenant War. Cortana's role in the mission was to infiltrate the Covenant ship system once the human forces had managed to get aboard, thus she would be able to take control of the vessel and aid the boarders in both eliminating the defenders and locating the target. To assist with this near-suicidal mission, Oni assigned the entire company of surviving Spartan twos to the Autumn and recalled them all to Reach. Before they joined the Autumn, however, they were each outfitted with a new Mark V Mjolnir suit, a massive upgrade from the Mark IV suit that had kept them all alive thus far. One of the most notable new design features, and one which accounted for almost 80% of the cost of the suits, was a layer of interwoven nanocrystals that allowed the suit to house a full AI matrix. This meant that Cortana could be partnered with the Spartan II who would protect and escort her during the mission. Cortana was given access to all their files and was allowed to choose the Spartan to be her carrier. Unsurprisingly given who she was based on, Cortana chose John 117. The two were partnered and they had their teamwork immediately put to the test in a live fire training scenario. The UNSC pulled out all the stops for this final test of the Mark V armor, throwing mines, auto turrets and even a Skyhawk fighter jet at the pair. The two were not put off, and narrowly succeeded despite the massive opposition. UNSC Colonel James Ackerson had been the one that authorised the use of deadly force against him in the test, and so Cortana decided to get her own back. She hacked into Ackerson's computer systems, and sent a fake request from him to UNSC Logistics, asking to be rotated back into frontline combat. Even more deviously, she wired a falsified receipt from a brothel to his wife back home in an attempt to destabilise their relationship. Her appetite for revenge satisfied, Cortana and the Chief could now begin their mission. With all hands aboard and all systems go, the Pillar of Autumn was preparing to transition to slipspace when Captain Keyes received a priority alpha transmission. Reach was about to come under Covenant attack, and all nearby UNSC warships were to rush to its defence. With the combined firepower of 20 orbital defence stations, over 100 ships in system, and an additional 52 warships coming in from the nearby Jericho and Tantalus systems, the UNSC had every right to feel confident about the coming battle. This confidence was shattered, however, when the slipspace distortion that Reach's remote sensor stations had detected belched out 314 Covenant capital ships, the largest combined fleet that humanity had ever faced. With the Spartan IIs all deployed groundside or on orbital station Gamma, John included, Cortana remained behind on the Autumn and assumed the role of ship's AI. Working together, Keys and Cortana were able to use the Autumn to great effect during the battle, destroying a carrier, a frigate, and even an assault cruiser virtually single-handedly. Their individual success was disproportionate to the UNSC's performance as a whole, however. Only 20 ships survived the initial engagement unscathed, and many of the late arriving reinforcement ships were cut down on their way to the rendezvous. With Reach all but lost, and their mission now more important than ever, Keyes gave the order for the Autumn to leave the system. Before the Autumn could leave, however, they had to pick up an important package. 
A fragment of Cortana's matrix had remained with Dr. Halsey to assist with the deciphering of Forerunner glyphs on a recovered artifact, and the decryption was now complete. The data was a set of stellar coordinates that indicated a location of great strategic importance, and it was vital that humanity was able to keep hold of this information. Halsey was able to get the Spartan 3s of Noble Team to safely escort Cortana's fragment to the waiting Autumn. As soon as the fragment was on board, the Autumn fled the system, leaving behind all the Spartan 2s barred John 117 and the wounded Linda 058. Cortana set the cruiser to jump to the decrypted coordinates, and a few hours later the battered Autumn and its exhausted crew transitioned back into normal space to find themselves in the Soel system. They had stumbled across the Forerunner installation 04, the Alpha Halo. They were not the only ones, however. A group of Covenant vessels had followed them into slipspace, and due to the superior speed of Covenant slipspace travel, were lying in wait. Cortana performed admirably in the fight, destroying four Covenant ships before the Autumn was finally boarded and overwhelmed. Cortana, partnered with the Master Chief, then went on to play a crucial role in the Battle of Installation 04, both containing the Flood Infection and denying the Covenant the use of the Halo Ring as a weapon. After escaping the Ring's destruction aboard a Longsword fighter, Cortana and the Chief were able to hijack the Covenant cruiser Ascendant Justice, with the help of Sergeant Johnson and a handful of other survivors. Once they had fought their way on board, the human forces were able to insert Cortana into the ship's systems, and she was then able to vent the ship's atmosphere, effectively eliminating the Covenant crew of the vessel. She was able to evade incoming fire from other Covenant vessels, and as soon as the Covenant ship's AI had been dealt with, she was able to jump the carrier into slipspace. Now that they had slipspace capable transport, Cortana set a course for Reach to look for the Spartan 2 ground teams that the Autumn had been forced to leave behind. Upon returning to Reach, Cortana faked several identification signals to allow them to slip past the Covenant ships in orbit over the partially glassed planet. The human crew of the Ascendant Justice was able to find eight surviving Spartan 2s, as well as Vice Admiral Danforth Whitcomb and Dr. Catherine Halsey. Cortana then assisted the Spartan 2 strike team with the raid on the unyielding Hierophant. Following that great victory, Cortana, John 117 and the others made their way back to Earth. When the Battle of Earth began on October 20th, 2552, Cortana played a key role from the start, using the magnetic accelerator cannon on Cairo Orbital Defense Station to terrible effect. Pairing up with John 117 again, the two played a pivotal role in both the defense of Earth and the Battle of Installation 05. At the end of the engagement, however, Cortana found herself left behind on the flood-infested High Charity, left to suffer interrogation from the Flood Gravemind. Against all the odds, Cortana was able to withstand weeks of psychological torture at the hands of the Gravemind without revealing any classified information regarding Earth's defences. Once Cortana was rescued from High Charity by John 117, the two could then enact Cortana's plan to destroy the Flood once and for all. Still in possession of the Alpha Halo's Index, Cortana was able to prematurely activate the replacement installation 04 and thus destroy it, the Ark, High Charity, and the entire Flood population. Fast forward a few years to the events of Halo 4 in 2557, and Cortana began to reach the end of her operational lifespan, and began falling into the terminal condition known as Rampancy. As well as simply having just lived out her 7 year life expectancy, this natural deterioration due to age was exacerbated by several factors. The sheer amount of information she collected during her lifespan significantly slowed her ability to process data, as well as the fact that the interrogation by the Gravemind corrupted several of her systems. Not to mention that during the years of inactivity spent on board the UNSC frigate Ford Unto Dawn, Cortana had nothing else to do but endlessly recatalogue the data she already had. All of this worked together to push Cortana towards a fragile and broken state in which we saw her during the first Battle of Requiem, the engagement which ultimately claimed her life. So there you have it, Cortana is one of the most advanced AIs that humanity has ever produced. Not just in terms of her computing ability, she was also the most human AI, forming deep and complicated relationships with many organic life forms. Her relationship with John 117 makes her more emotionally relatable than any other Halo character, and it is more than a little ironic that she is more human than many of the human characters. Cortana was one of the things that made Halo great, and so it is no surprise that the final cutscenes of Halo 4 brought tears to the eyes of many fans. Who knows whether Cortana will return in some way for Halo 5? I know that I wouldn't rule it out. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've been H2Acon, and I'll see you next time on Character Case Files.